What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the crack of pack series uh, Before we get into this one if you missed the last one it was sixth edition You really need to go watch it. it that was potentially the most like exciting pack opening I think I have had that was insane uh, Really really good value so go check that one out But today we are opening up a very new set of Ixalan uh, actually some surprisingly good stuff in this too. Search for his Kanta is really up there on my radar is the card that I really want. Uh, Carnage Tyrant though is up there. Uh, Vraska's Contempt, uh, Growing Rights of Itlamok is surprisingly up there. And then of course like the dual lands, things like that. <clears throat> Not tons of value, but definitely stuff that I would be happy to get. So, uh, we'll go through this. Hopefully we can determine what our pack one pick one would be. Uh, we are going to go through this as if it is a draft environment, so I'll do the best I can. I drafted a little bit of Ixalan, not much, uh, so I may not be perfect at this, but I'll do the best I can. <coughs> Excuse me. So, let's kick it off. Our first common is Queen's Base Soldier, a 2-2 for one and a black vanilla creature, not very exciting. It is a vampire, which does have synergy in this set, so there are reasons that you might need this card as curve filler, uh, but definitely unexciting, not something I'd want to get. Uh, Rummaging Goblin is two and a red for a 1-1 one, one Goblin Rogue. You can tap it, discard a card, and draw a card. Uh, this is actually decent. It's okay filler in any red deck. Uh, it helps you dig through your deck. Yes, it's rummaging, not looting or card advantage engines or anything like that, but uh, it does help you get rid of some useless cards and hopefully draw into something that's a little bit more exciting. So, not bad, not amazing, but definitely something you would consider. <coughs> Excuse me. Bishop's Soldier. Uh, is a 2-2 two, two for one and a white. It has lifelink, and again, it is a vampire. This is much, much better than the Queen's Base Soldier, uh, solely because it has lifelink. Uh, lifelink is actually worthwhile in this set, um, and again, with all the vampire uh, synergies, excuse me, you can actually buff this creature up a lot, so definitely a good card. Uh, again, not amazing card. It's good, but it's not amazing. Definitely something you'd want in the vampire deck, though. Uh, March of the Drowned is one black for a sorcery. Choose one. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, or return two target pirate cards from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, obviously, pirates being another uh, tribal synergy in this set, definitely worth it in that deck. Uh, honestly, it's probably playable in other decks as well. Uh, any creature-based deck, if you're running black, it's okay if this is if this is a one of in your deck. You're going to be able to pull back something hopefully really really powerful. Uh, but it's a relatively unexciting card elsewhere. Uh, here we go, Jade Guardian. Uh, three and a green for a 2-2, Merfolk Shaman, Merfolk being another tribal synergy. Uh, this has Hexproof, and when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target Merfolk you control. That can include this card. Uh, so if you don't have any other Merfolk, this uh, basically enters the battlefield as a 3-3 with Hexproof. Uh, Hexproof, as most of you probably know, is absolutely insane uh, in draft, really unlimited in general. It's great to have. It avoids any targeted removal at all, uh, which is the majority of it. Uh, so uh, definitely a powerful card, definitely something I would be okay with. Uh, Shorekeeper is one blue for a 0-3. Uh, it's a trilobite. I never knew that. Uh, you can pay seven in a blue, tap it, sacrifice it to draw three cards. Relatively unexciting card. Uh, most of the time this is just gonna get run over before you can actually activate the ability, so it's really not worth it in my opinion. Uh, Pious Interdiction is an enchantment for three and a white. You enchant creature, when this enters the battlefield you gain two life. The enchanted creature cannot attack or block. This card's great. Uh, it's obviously enchantment removal. Uh, Classic white kind of a thing, but you gain two life as well. Really, really good. Uh, I might like that more than the Jade Guardian. I'm not sure yet. Uh, Crushing Canopy is an instant for two and a green. You get to choose one, destroy target creature with flying, or destroy target enchantment. This is really, really good sideboard tech. Uh, most of the time you'll be able to find a hit with this just because it does hit creatures with flying, and most decks are probably going to run one or two. Uh, I would say this is going to be more of a sideboard card, especially in this set, because uh, things like Merfolk, you're not going to find much with flying in a Merfolk deck. Uh, so you're probably going to want this uh, as a sideboard card. Not first pickable, but not bad. Uh, Water Trap Weaver is a 2-2 for 2 and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its next uh, untap step. This card's great as well. Again, a very, very good tempo merfolk play. Uh, super, super powerful. I might even like that more than the Jade Guardian, but I'm not sure yet. 
Uh, Duress, a classic card. Sorcery for one black. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, and that player discards that card. Really good sideboard. Uh, probably not very good mainboard. Uh, most of the decks in this format are going to be creature-based. Uh, dinosaurs, vampires, uh, merfolk. Uh, just not really worth it to play a Duress main deck, I don't think. Uh, certainly I've seen it done, but I don't think it's really good. Our first uncommon is Sentinel Totem. An artifact for one, uh, when it enters the battlefield you scry one and then you can tap it, uh, exile it, and exile all cards from all graveyards. This is much more of a constructed card, really not good in draft in my opinion, just not worth it at all. Uh, unclaimed territory, it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, you can tap to add one generic mana to your mana pool, or you can tap it and add one mana of any color to your mana pool only to cast the creature spell of the chosen type. Uh, this is actually a really good constructed card. Uh, it's found its way into the modern humans deck in particular. Uh, very, very powerful. However, uh, in draft, probably not that exciting. I think you would probably take this if you were in Merfolk or uh, Vampires or some really, really well planned out, well crafted strategy. Uh, if you ended up with just a huge number of Merfolk, certainly put this in there. I think that's great. But uh, generally speaking, you want to stay on curve, and this sometimes can set you back either by color, uh, which is really the biggest thing, and I, I just, I'm not a huge fan of that. Stormfleet Spy, 2-2 uh, two, two for 2 and a blue. It has a raid, so it when it enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, you can draw a card. This is obviously for the pirate synergy. Raid is sort of the mechanic for them. Uh, I don't really like the Pirates deck. I think it's fine, but it's not my favorite. I'd prefer Merfolk or Vampires, uh, which seem to be the strongest. Um, and so I do like this card I, in general. I think it's great. Uh, it's really, really good as a three drop. You can draw a card, uh, but in general, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, and our rare is Spell Swindle, an instant for three and two blue. Uh, counter target spell create X colorless treasure artifact tokens, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. They all have uh, sacri tap and sacrifice it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. This card is actually pretty good. Uh, by the late game, you'll be able to counter something really, really strong and be able to have tons of extra mana uh, to do something hopefully really, really broken. Uh, I don't know that I'd first pick it, to be honest. Uh, it It's fine, but not amazing. I like a little bit more direction, especially in this set where uh, tribal synergies are so important. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of first picking that. I think, um, between these three, I really, based also on what other cards were in this pack that I would hope to wheel, I think I would probably either pick the Jade Guardian or the Water Trap Weaver. Uh, there was, obviously the Stormfleet Spy was great, Unclaimed Territory would be a fine pickup. Uh, there are a few other cards that I feel like would be good with these. Um, and honestly, I kind of like the Water Trap Weaver. Uh, it's really, really strong. It's a great tempo play. Tap something down. It's fantastic. Uh, I do see the argument for the Jade Guardian because it's hexproof. Uh, very must answer uh, on the field, but it's a little behind the curve in terms of four drop. Really, it's probably going to be a three three, uh, or pump up something else, which is good. Uh, but I think Water Trap Weaver is going to be my pick. It just seems fantastic, and it allows you to get in some extra damage. Even if they lay some crazy big bomb on the field, you can tap it down. So that's my pick. Uh, by all means, feel free to disagree with me in the comment section below. Again, I am no draft expert, but I do enjoy doing these. So if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Please make sure to go check out the previous one also. That 6th edition pack was insane. Uh, but I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.